Hi guys, welcome back to our Footy Vlogs. Welcome to another video. And Keen Menton's here with me today. And we're just going to talk about the sacking of Mark Bertram from Waterford FC. And we'll get Keen's views on it as well. But just before we get into the actual sacking, etc., we'll just get into the tweet that Bertram put out around 7 this morning or something like that. Um, so Mark Bertram had this to say at around 7 in the morning. After a brief text conversation with the owner last night and a difference of opinion on a couple of matters, I've surprisingly been given a one-week suspension, meaning I will no longer be able to manage the team Friday night in the big playoff game. Um, just madness, that part of it, isn't it? Anyone that knows me knows I'm a man of principles and will stick to them. That leaves me to say I have the utmost confidence in the players and staff to finish off this amazing journey with the win they so richly deserve after the man of mammoth effort and professionalism they have applied. And then lastly, to the fans, for the massive part they have played in the team's turnaround, please don't underestimate the role you've played. Let's finish off the great escape. Now, um, I suppose the first few lines of that is, is interesting, to say the least, Key, and the fact that allegedly now the club have said nothing on this, but you have to assume Mark is right on this. He got a one-week suspension um, for a difference of opinion, allegedly, um, which just sounds a bit crazy. Now, I'd say within an hour, he got sacked from putting that out. So obviously on the back of that, he gets sacked. Um, I don't know if it was a case of Mark kind of didn't care at that stage. And to be honest, if that did happen and he did get the one week suspension, by that point, I think it's over anyway. Like, you know, how you can't relate, you can't, that relationship can't be mended, I suppose. But what are your initial thoughts before we get into a few other things there? Yeah, look, I obviously seen it kind of went up and it's just, it like just when you think Waterford is back where they should be and like we've had at the start of the season every week they were, they were a laughing stock of the league every week there was something happening every week you know whether it be Kevin Shady not playing subs because of, he was disappointed with the refereeing decisions or you know then all of a sudden you know the, the, the old owner and every week there was something with Waterford and I think everyone got used to it and then all of a sudden Mark's had to coming in and just really like re-energizing the whole club and really bringing the whole of Waterford together. And like you see that then, you know, you obviously they've they've been very poor the last couple of weeks. Let's be honest, it's it's proper like you know, it is relegation material. Haven't won in the last five games, Kane. Do you just wonder if there was something going under the surface that was leading to that a little bit or just a coincidence? Uh, I don't know. I would yeah. I'll probably say that now because yeah. Heart was fantastic there Friday night, even though essentially the Waterford game was a nothing game as well. Pats and Waterford, you know, and like whatever happened didn't really matter because Harps were three or four nil up at the time and during the game, like, and it was well over after the second goal went in for Harps. So the atmosphere kind of died in the ground. But yeah. I think if, like, going just going back to the season, if Waterford could have been in the playoff position, if they were guaranteed the playoff position at the start of the season, they would have bit your hand off. It's how they came in in the summer and how Mark really rejuvenated the whole club and re-energised every, every bit out of that club. And all of a sudden, they, you know, they were, they were looking up the table and set it down. And then the last couple of weeks have obviously been a big disappointment that doesn't does now get away from that. I'd, and we've seen Mark coming out in his interviews. I think after the semi-final, it's kind of, the wheels kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, well, sorry, I think they, they got something against Bowles, didn't they? They beat Bowles in the league match yeah. on the Monday, that's yeah. right. On the yeah. Monday, yeah. yeah. And then I think the wheels fell off completely for them. But, you know, it. I, I was shocked when I seen that this morning. Uh, they, like, this is the biggest game of the season. This is the manager. Like, why suspend them for the last game of the season when essentially it doesn't mean anything if you lose? If you lose, you're gone. So it's a massive one for Waterford in terms of, like, these are bigger than, like, this is the biggest game of the weekend over the cup final in terms of Waterford. Like, more to the, lose, yeah. Like, there's an awful lot more to lose in this game than there is in the cup final. So this is the game of the, this is the, game of the week kind of thing for more to lose. And this, like, I think everything that Waterford have built in the last six months relies on this game. And, you know, it's... It's definitely not ideal preparations, but you know, like I was shocked when I seen it, and I just couldn't get my head around it. Mm. Look, 
I kind of knew he was gone or he was gone when I seen the statement from Mark mm. because you can't come out and basically rip the piss out of the club like that. You know, there's another side of it. Like, I, I wouldn't... He must I, have known. He must have known by like, coming out with that like, statement. That's it, exactly. Like, look, I, I get he's a passionate man. I get he's probably annoyed and a little bit pissed off. But the minute you come out, look, as funny as it sounds, I think everyone in Waterford is with Mark here. Mm. Reason being is because of what the good memories he's after giving them over the last couple of months. He's after giving everyone, everyone wants to play for him. He's after connecting the town. So everyone's on the Mark Bertram train. And, you know, that, that train could have been going to Europe next year. That's the reality of it, you know. That's they could have been fighting for the top four, and probably so. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 a shame because I think he added a lot to the league, especially when he came in. Uh, you know, he, he just like I says, he just the the life was sucked out of Waterford. They were in, they were a club with no direction. They were the laughing stock of the league, and then all of a sudden, it kind of changed, you know, and. I just, I think all the fans are obviously with Mark here, and I think a lot of the fans are actually criticising Waterford. But it's important to say we don't know what went on. We're just being told mm. we're going to have Waterford side of it. We're going to have Mark side of it. It looks then, bad though. It looks worse at this main time from the Waterford uh, owner's side of it, Forest and that as well, because obviously there's been no statement, and we don't expect a, you know, a log of what went on. But if you're sacking a manager. That's done a good job, by the way. So it's not like he's done a bad job or uses this as an excuse. He's done a good job. There's three days to go to what is a cup final, to be honest. If you're sacking him, you need to think you have one bloody good reason and a very good reason to be sacking him at this point. And if they don't have a very good reason and it kind of gets brushed under the carpet, then questions are back on the owners and you're kind of saying, is this the cycle again with Waterford like they had on their power, etc.? Like, what are they at? And if, if they are having rows over, as I say, disagreements, it, there's a few things going on there with the academy and things like that and all that. But it's it, there's no need to kind of just, you know, part ways over a couple of disagreements and rows and things like that because it happens to clubs all the time. Like, Yeah, look, it's part and parcel. I think anyone that is anyway involved in management or anything, even at the lowest of levels, will know there's disagreements. And that's part and parcel of the game. Uh, what I think, you know, like Mark is obviously had to come from a very professional background, and I think he has brought that to Waterford. And you know, they're not they're not a laughing stock anymore. They're not, you know, they're not the team that every week it was like it was like a circus for them every week. They just didn't know what was what was next. You could, you just when you thought it couldn't get any worse for them, you know, something something else would pop up or. You know, like like I said, Shady at the start of the year. And, you know, like him going on a protest by not putting subs on the bench or, mm. you know, stuff like that. It's just, just coming it's, out and saying things like um, he didn't feel the need to actually analyse the opposition and this type of stuff. You're kind of going... Yeah, now I do think in, in recent weeks, Mark has obviously yeah. lost a lot of respect in the league as well in terms of probably how he comes out and how he was saying things in his post-match interviews and the weeks after. Yeah, like the Shamrock Rovers game as well and stuff which seemed to be heavy yeah. didn't it on the players? And claiming that you know claiming that the cup final draw yeah. was fixed and, and he, he didn't only say that once you know he said that he said that a number of times and in a number of interviews that the cup final draw was fixed and he knew going up to Bowes that he was going to lose it by the referees. And you know, it's it, stuff like that. I think he lost a lot of respect. And the under know, 19 lost... scenario as well, Keen, I'll just throw it in as well. Is that the academy, obviously, the Orford FC Academy, the under 19 team, they put this out. They said the first team manager has a rule that if players do not train, they cannot be in the match day squad, regardless of their status. All of our under 19 players are amateurs and are in school, college or in work during the day when the first team train. Obviously, it is very difficult for them to attend. Uh, first team uh, training during the day so yeah, there's a bit of a squabble there as well like you know what I mean obviously he decided not to push any under 19s on the bench against St. Patrick's leg I think that four players on the bench two goalkeepers you would like to think 
even if you've no intention of playing them, that you add them to the bench. It just looks more professional. And if there was a disaster, like a couple of players went off injured or something in certain positions, that they're they're available to come on. Um, so there's a squabble there going on as well, like isn't there? Yeah, look, oh. it's um I'm not sticking up on Mark or Anton here. I think he's he needs to know the league and he needs to know the players. He needs to know what level we are at here, you yeah. know. And uh, as professional as we'd like to say our Premier Division is, it's still a part time league. You um, can't have under 19s like that train, and it's impossible, isn't no, it? No, but look, the first team, understand. sorry, but the first team. I can, I can understand, understand his point, though, yeah. I can understand his frustration, and I can understand his point. He's at the common, obviously, with a big background in, in the English Football yeah. League and QPR, and, you know, he's at the, obviously after coming through the academy there, and he's at, and he's used to a good academy. He's used to academy players training, and, you know, they're full-time professionals, and... Unfortunately, we don't have that in this league. As as much as like I know being a, being myself at the underage league of Ireland and stuff like that, how professional it is. Yeah. But at the same time, the players are in school or they've part time jobs or you know, but they're still training three and four nights a week, and then they have a game. And you could be you could be in Waterford on a, on a Saturday. You know, you could be in Derry over Sunday. It just depends on what way the fixtures go. But you know, it's an awful big commitment. So. I think that needs to be questioned from Mark. And I think another little to... question, Keena, I'll throw it as well is that apparently he was at a birthday party in England, a family birthday party, fair enough. But seemingly he was still in England and is still in England. And you're kind of saying to yourself, does he have to be in England for three or four days with such a big game coming up? Now, I'm not sure if there's a bit of friction there. And uh, maybe he was supposed to report back. We don't know any of this yet. That's why Waterford needed to come out with a statement. But if that was the case, then it probably isn't good on his side. However, those little arguments we've come up with and little errors you may have made, more disagreements in general, and I still don't think it's enough to actually sack him with three days to go to the, to the playoff final, oh, you know, well, unless there's something else. But from what yeah, we're gathering... Unless whatever happened must have been really bad for this to happen, mm. uh, or unless it's like it's another piss take from Waterford, and that's the way it... As, but so if you're a Waterford it, fan, Keane, I think you're hoping something really bad happens. So then you can kind of go, okay, fair enough. We can back the club now and um, the owners are okay, et cetera, et cetera. But as you say, if it's a bit of a piss take again, you're scratching your head if you're a Waterford fan, aren't you? Yeah, like, to be honest with you, unless whatever we done, like I said, so I, I don't know what the situation. Look, I, in my opinion, everyone's entitled to a couple of days off. Uh, if he has a birthday party, you know, I, I'm not sure. I don't know the ins and outs, but... Yeah, you know, you would you would like to think you probably had a couple of days off, and it, he probably would have been back for training tonight or training today. You know, yeah. he, you, you can get a flight now early in the morning, so he probably was expecting to report to training this afternoon. I'm not sure what happened. Then he obviously seen he got sacked, so I, w- I wouldn't look too much into him. Probably not reporting back because I wouldn't say he's that he's not that type of person. I think he's. Even in a statement, he's saying, he's saying how much he gave to the club and he, yeah. how much he wants him to succeed on Friday night. Mm. But that's uh, another thing we'll touch on, actually, there, Keane. You're saying how much he gave to the club. We were just saying a couple of weeks ago how it was great to see, you know, Bertram had signed a, a two year contract. I think it was two years, it was two or three, two or three years anyway. And yeah. some of the players are signing on now. That could change if they get relegated. I don't know. There could be a bit of a clause there. But we're saying, look, this is great for, for Waterford going into next season. It could be a threat. If you're a player now at Waterford, I know you have a big match on Friday, but it's still difficult to get your head around all this stuff, particularly some of the players like your Dara Powers and your Keeves who've seen it all, let's say, in the last couple of years. It's another kick in the, you know what? Yeah, no, it is. And, you know, I just, as hard as it is and as hard as it's going to be, they mm. just, they cannot focus on that. It's out of their control. They have a massive game for the club on, on uh, Friday night against UCD and it has like the, this has nothing got to do with the players this has nothing got to do with you know what the players can't do anything about the situations the club makes or the manager or anything the players are employees of the club and they need to go and they need to be have tunnel vision here for the week and just get through this game on Friday look it's not ideal preparations I think they've gone from big favourites probably massive underdogs in a matter of hours like but you know they'll They'll want to go there with a point to prove, we think, as well, the players. And they'll want to... They they obviously, from all accounts, 
like it's it's Mark Bertram's team. There's no doubt about it. You look at the the amount of players he's after bringing in, and everyone's after buying into what he's what he's doing here at Waterford with mm. the contract and everything. Even the owners have bought into what he was planning on doing. So, you know, I think the players will obviously be disappointed, and it just shows you nothing is concrete in football, and that something like this can happen. And you know, the the wheels fall off in a matter of hours, really. But you know, it's the players need. They have a massive game. As hard as it is, and as as mad as it sounds, they they just they can't. They don't have time to think about this situation. They have to go into training tomorrow. I would presume the assistant manager, or I would presume Wonder some Gary can might come back in. Didn't he get a couple of games there yeah. when she didn't? She did. Sorry, oh, left. I, I would say the underage and the underage manager is probably the 19s or something will step in and take take. <laughs> The, team. the irony, <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I, that's it's going to have to be, you know, that's the way it is. It has to be that way. Mm-hmm. But someone is going to have to take the team. The players mm-hmm. are going to have to have clarity for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The players need to know who's in charge. Uh, I'm not saying they need to come out and speak to them, speak to like they don't need to come out and address anything. In my opinion, the club look if they want to get a couple of fans, probably won't on side. They're going to have to come out and do a little thing, but first and foremost. These twenty odd players, the academy staff, and everyone need to know what's happening in this league or what's happening in this club. They have to have the clarity tomorrow morning when they report for training, and then it's all systems go for Friday. But you know what? It's all outside noise at the minute. Yeah. The playing staff and stuff like that. They have a massive game, and look, it's a massive distraction. <laughs> it's look, you know, it's very hard to. It, it's easier to like think about a 24 7 and forget about a type of thing, so it's going to be on the players' minds. It's going to probably be their in the phones are hopping and stuff, you know. <laughs> you'd like to think you'd like to think they can put it to one side, but they're not robots and uh, they're going this is going to be out there that there's no hiding from it. But the players have a massive chance and a ma- massive opportunity to keep the club in the division, and you know, everything else out of that is out of the hands. Just on the suspension thing, actually, came, which was the initial issue and really the real issue, we could argue, really. But um, have you ever seen that before, actually? No, we, oh. I haven't seen that before. Obviously, we've seen league suspensions and stuff like that, but I've never seen, like, I've never seen a club suspending a manager in a case where, like, look... Over disagreements, where, allegedly, yeah. yeah. No, but, like, I've obviously suspensions... Of, are there from the league to stamp authority and stuff like that and you know to stop managers giving lip on the sideline or whatever, whatever it is that's why you get suspended on the line but for the club to come out and for, and to like to to give themselves a, an uphill task to win the game without Mark involved and it's not even a touchline ban he's banned for a week he's not able to contact the players speak to the players so I, I, I don't know what went on. Like I says, I, it's only us guessing here that the minute what could That's go the on. real issue, isn't it? Because after that, there's no turning back. I mean, he either walks or he gets sacked, really, once that That's comes it. out. Yeah. And look, he's after, give, he's after having a massive, a massive contract there. I'm not saying massive in terms of money, but I'm saying, you know, a, a two and a half year daily sign. So there'll be two, se- two full seasons left. And he's a man of his principles. And he, that's what he says. So I would presume he'd want he'd want that few bob because he wasn't let go. He was sacked, and that's the way it is. So Waterford have an awful lot. It's a it's a costly one. Uh, so whatever happened, I don't know. It's you know, cost, whatever happened yeah. must have been serious because if you add all these up, Waterford are definitely getting the short straw here. So mm. you know, it, whether it, whether something serious happened, then he got sacked, and you know they don't have to pay him because. Do you think, Keen, if they say something serious did happen, do you think they need to clarify that though publicly? Uh, I think the truth will come out all the time. Yeah. Uh, people are passionate about the game. People are passionate about the club. Uh, and all emotions are going to be high, but everyone wants the club to succeed, and everyone wants the club to do well. Mm. And that you know, that's that's the other side of things. Like everyone wants the best for their club. Mike Bertram wants the best for that team. The owner wants the best for that. But everyone has different ways of going about it. Mm. And everyone, I might have a different belief of how we want Waterford to play than 
Mark Bird's from. Uh, but at the same time, we still have the same aim and same objective to make the club better. So that's that's where emotions emotions ride high because you're passionate about your beliefs, what you want to bring to the table. And if it doesn't work out, I know you're accountable for it, but a lot of people don't like to take that. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a strange one. I would say the club, like I said, emotions are high. If I was the club, I'd let the dust settle off the field. Let the lads look. You have to go in and give them a bit of clarity. I would say the players know exactly what's happening by now. It's what now, five o'clock, something like that, four o'clock, whatever time it is now. Like you know, <laughs> oh, the <yeah>. players. <laughs> we'll clarify. We're doing this at four o'clock. <laughs> so you know, like the players, I would say that's happened. What seven, eight o'clock this morning. So I would say the players know exactly what's happening now. And everyone in the club, in the club, in house knows what the story is, and I think that's most important. Obviously, the fans, the fans are majorly important to the club and to the support. But your main objective here is to look after them players, uh, make sure you win that game on Friday. And yeah, as I, do, I, think, yeah. I think the truth will come out in the end, which mm. it always will. Uh, but. You know, it's like we've seen Mark done a little interview there with one of the local uh, things. I think it's Waterford something FM, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah and he, he was basically just told that, like, he, he seen it on Twitter that he was gone type of thing. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one. Yeah, yeah. So, look, it's I can't get my head around it still. Uh, I'm just waiting to hear more news as it happens type of thing. But, you know, it's... It, it, it doesn't put the league in good light and I think that's one thing Mark has done since he came here has put the league in good light and you know put Waterford on the map again so it's strange I, I like I said I think the dust will settle and the club will come out with something and speak or they'll come out and they'll say who the manager is on Friday and they'll mm. announce the coach and staff and something like that but like I said I think most important is the players and just make sure they're prepared for Friday's game It'll be interesting to see if Forrest actually turns up uh, at Richmond Park as well. He likes to go in with the fans. I'm not sure that'll be happening this weekend, but look, it'll be interesting to see what happens because there's bound to be more developments on this. So, guys, let us know what you think overall uh, on any subject matter involved in this. And thanks, Keen, for your input as usual.